Okay, we'll have an opening comment from Coach Pearl, then take questions for the players. Kind of wish it was a 20-minute game instead of a 40-minute game. You know, we were ready to play. The kids were ready to play. Uh, Stephen Pearl had the game plan, did a great job uh, with, our, with our defensive game plan. Uh, and uh, we got great looks in the first half. Ran whatever we wanted and, uh, and played great basketball. Um, in the second half, I don't think our guys were, we were as prepared for how aggressive they would be. I'm sure that Calvin jumped all over them at halftime and just lit them up. And uh, they came out and they guarded us much harder, much better. And then we, uh, we didn't respond to it. In other words, we, we probably anticipated that that's how they'd got us in the first half and then deal with it. It actually worked to our disadvantage because that's how we expected them to play from the beginning. And when it was so easy in the first half, I think there's a, thing, there's a chance they thought that, that we thought that that's how it was going to be for the rest of the game because we were, we, uh, we, we were dominated in the second half on both ends of the floor. Okay, we'll start here on the right. Players only, please. Uh, guys, a pretty emotional end uh, to a, a long season for you guys. You know, uh, what are your thoughts on maybe having played your last game as all the basketball players? Um, you know, the experience was great. You know, this is Zeb's last game in college, so I mean, I wish we could have won for him and like just competed at our best for Zepp. You know, like he's done for good for college. He doesn't have another year, but um, you know, we just keep, you know, move on to the next play. That's what Coach always say. I mean, same thing Jay Will said for real. I mean, this was Zepp's last ride. He doesn't have a COVID year to use uh, like me and Jay Will. We got another year of eligibility left. So, I mean, for. Us to you know go out there and just put it all out there on the court, uh, try to get a win and keep the season going. But came up short tonight. Um, you know, hats off to Houston. Um, like Coach BP said, um, they came out. You know, it was aggressive second half. Um, you know, it's my last game. You know, I love these dudes. I love the coaching staff, the walk-ons, the AD, everyone in Auburn. Um, be an Auburn man forever. But, you know, this ain't the end. You know, we're coming back next year, you know. So, um, like I say, it's going to be Auburn forever. You know, this, I cherish this moment. I cherish the fans, my family. Um, what were they able to do differently in the second half, particularly defensively? There was this long stretch and you guys just couldn't get a bucket or something like a shot off. Second half, they uh, we we missed box box outs. Uh, they got offensive rebounds, um, second chance points, and then they uh, they lined us up and drove us and got to mid range shots. You know they was able to knock down mid range shots. Question: Do you obviously have a COVID year? Have you guys given any thought if you guys are going to use it or not? Um, I haven't really thought much about it, you know, because, I mean, I'm locked in into, like, what's now, what was now. So, I mean, now, I mean, I think more about it, see what I have to talk with my mom and my family, see what's best for me, talk with BP, see what's best for me and, like, what's going to work out. So, I haven't really thought much about it. Same as, you know, Jay Will said, we was focused, locked in on the season. We wasn't, you know, thinking about what – what's next for us, you know, we was locked in on the season trying to, you know, expand the season, keep keep going, keep playing with this team. But now that it's come to an end, uh, you know, sit down, talk to coach, talk to my family and make a decision. Um, how tough is it, whichever players or I guess all you guys, like how tough is it when the free throws aren't falling and how do you kind of overcome them? Um, all it is is free throws is just concentration. 
you know, you could be tired or whatever, but, like, I mean, you have 10 seconds to shoot a free throw. You know what I mean? That's on all of us. Like, I missed one, a few guys missed a few, but, like, if we make our free throws, we're, we're battling and winning the game, so. Jalen, as BP said, in the first half, y'all were getting a lot of good looks, running whatever you wanted. And just what what was clicking for you guys so well to be playing with such confidence in the first half against a defense like that? Um, you know, just sticking together. I think, like, <clears throat> after the first, like, 10 minutes, five minutes, like, they were, like, pretty much gas. So we just, I mean, we were probably tired too, but, like, we just kept pushing ourselves. And with me, we always talk about pushing uh, each other through fatigue. So we just kept competing. And, um, yeah, we just competed well. Joe Gouvernail, like comes up. Congratulations on the career. You were at Auburn during such a transformational time for Auburn basketball in the school. You know, what was that like to experience, and how are you going to take that away? Um, it was a great experience. Um, coming in with, you know, Wendell, Walker Kessler, Jabari Smith, a couple other guys. Um, we made history. Um, we was number one in the country. Um, you know, won a regular season championship, you know, which we didn't predict. You know, we came in, worked hard, and, you know, did it. You know, and then we made history again by making the tournament, um, you know, going around at 32. But, you know, it was, it's been a hell of a ride. You know, I appreciate Auburn so much. Last question for the players right here. Uh, guys, can you talk about what it was like uh, having the fans show up the way they did for you guys at Birmingham today? I mean, it's essentially a home court advantage. The fans showed up. They were loud the whole time. Can you talk about the fan support? Uh, I mean, they, they show up every time. I mean, the fans, they come, come in packs, uh, come deep, uh, show up. They cheer us on. They cheer us on when we lose. Whether we lose or win, they're there every time. Uh, just you know, showing their support, and we can't we can't uh, express you know a thank you enough to to the fans for all they do. Okay, players, thank you. You're dismissed. Take your name, please. Take that. Uh, take your take your name, please. Take Alice. We'll start right here up front. BP, you talked about it in your opening statement about the way they changed up their defense in the second half. Um, you said they were more aggressive. Just what all was giving you guys trouble from what they were doing on the defensive side of the ball? They, they guarded us in the second half like we thought they'd got us all game long. Um, they got great athletes. They pressed up on the ball. They made it really difficult for us to, to run our offense. Um, they extended catches. Um, and. Um, you know that it just our t our execution, our spacing, we just we just weren't sharp, um, and I don't I don't think we played. Uh, you know, the first half we had eight assists and only two turnovers. In the second half, we had um, three assists and five turnovers. So we didn't we didn't we didn't uh, we didn't uh, execute, uh, which is not typical. Typical in the second half uh, with the offense in front of our bench, we typically have put up great offensive numbers. So give Houston you know, credit for the way they guarded and their physicality. And We're going to Zoom and take a question from Dan Tortora. Dan Tortora, wake up call, DT.com. Coach, just, I, I know that this is not how you want the season to end, but what you can say was most rewarding about the season here with this team specifically and what you think Kelvin Sampson has done with the Houston program as well? well I, I think two things jump out at me. Uh, number one, we're interested in making history, and this team had a good year. Um, and they made the NCAA tournament, and they advanced in the NCAA tournament um, and added to the history of Auburn basketball by not losing a first-round game and, um, and, and gave the one seed, you know, a pretty good run for, for 20 minutes. Um, this team's been resilient. Um, it's played a, it's played the toughest schedule that I've ever played, <clears throat> 17 games against the field, and just kept bouncing back all year long after tough losses. Um, so you got to you got to admire them and give them that credit. Um, you know, Kelvin um, is a great coach and a great teacher, and his teams rely on toughness and physicality and conditioning and 
Um, and he had a number of players play very heavy minutes. I thought that our bench and the fact that we played 10 and he really only played about seven um, could have been a factor for us in the second half. But it, it uh, didn't turn that out that way. They, they, they obviously turned it up. I mean, look, Sasser, Sasser was the best player on the floor. He, he's a great player. And he rose up and made big shots. Um, Mark was able to take our smaller guards and just back them down to score over them. They matched them up against our smaller guards. And he was able to make one-on-one -on -one plays, got to the foul line. Um, you know, we missed a lot of free throws, particularly in the second half, that, you know, were, were big factors. Um, let me tell you, Janai Broom had a, had, did a lot of really good things. I, I don't think there will be a player that will draw 10 fouls in an NCAA tournament game this year. He drew 10 fouls. That's hard to do. Um, and he got, you know, he was, you know, we did a good job of getting it in there to him. And, you know, and he got hammered and, and uh, you know, obviously had, had he been able to finish few more shots in there and obviously struggled from the foul line, you know, uh, which uh, which was a factor in the second half. But uh, I know he feels terrible. But listen, this team is not here without Janai Broom. We're not an NCAA tournament team. And, and, and his, that piece of adding him made all the difference in our ability to be able to continue to make history and have a good year. Second row. Uh, BB, how frustrating is it when the free throws in particular aren't falling? There were just several stretches where you guys just missed both of them. Well, I mean, it's, it, obviously it, it's frustrating, but you know what's, what's more frustrating is that's something you can't control. So the things that I can do a better job can controlling are, you know, we just got to recognize that they shot, you know, um, 50% in the second half that, um, you know, they were four for 10 for three and they didn't miss a free throw. They were 18 and 18 from the foul line. So in the second half, they did everything they needed to do offensively and we couldn't guard them. That's something we could have controlled. That's something we got to, you know, so the guys could look at this or that or look, they scored 50 points in the second half. And that's why they won. So. Uh, Coach Michael Gibbs, War Report. You um, ultimately you noted the free throw disparity, but four of twenty from the field in the second half. From a coaching standpoint, uh, what do you feel like you could have done maybe to prepare the team a little bit for the inevitable adjustments that Houston made defensively? You know, um, I mean, we missed. Some, I mean, I, I think we got pretty good look. I mean, I think we got some pretty good looks. You know, it's like it wasn't like there wasn't a lot of like. There wasn't a ton of panic, you know, maybe a, a few possessions in the last five or six minutes um, when we didn't run, you know, panic meaning we didn't run anything. Um, over dribbled, like, like in the second half, we drove it downhill and sometimes we got fouled and sometimes they blocked our shot. And in the first half, we had much more purpose driving it, passing it. We, did, we didn't share the ball in the second half. Bruce, I wanted to ask you about Zepp with it being his last game, just the last couple of seasons, what kind of just what was the impact he made on this program in his in his time here? Just what can you say about it? Well, he won a regular season championship. He was part of a number one a team that was ranked number one in the country. Um, his team this year, um, you know, played the toughest schedule and, and, and one of the toughest schedules in college basketball. They were ranked in the top twenty five for I don't know how many weeks. Um, and, um, you know, the way Zepp is as a person, uh, the way he is as an Auburn, trying to be an Auburn man, um, I can hardly wait to begin to go to work and start to talk to our donor base and our alums. If, if Zepp's played his last game and decides he wants to do something else, the Auburn family is going to line up to hire that kid. <laughs> line up to hire him because he's a winner. He's a hard worker. He's loyal, and he's everything. You know how you, you know, uh, you, you bring somebody into your organization, your team, your family. You make statements when you bring somebody in like Jeff Zepp Jasper. Right here, far right. Jerry Zepp, WBTM. 
Coach, I know at this moment it's difficult to reflect on what this team has meant to you as a person, but you talk about history, and I want to ask you, how has this team left an impact on you? I'm proud of them, but I also have a pretty high standard. And so I'm grateful, and um, I want them to feel really good about the fact that they had a good year. And, uh, um, you know, we are grateful for our fan base. <laughs> I'm grateful for the Auburn University and the way they support us and the way, you know, so many people on our staff and in the university and the athletic department have worked so hard to give us a chance to play, you know, this environment. Um, you know, and, and I, I want to thank the NCAA and the committee for helping Birmingham have such a successful weekend um, by placing us here where our, where our fans could, could watch us play. And obviously, uh, our fans turned out. So um, I'm, I'm proud of this team. Um, but uh, if you know me, I'm on to the next play. And uh, I'll be recruiting tonight. Bruce, congratulations on a successful season. Um, I want to take you back to 2021. Um, how did the decision of Scoot Henderson to choose to play in the G League reshape the SEC? Wow. How do you think it changed? Um, that was pre-NIL. So is there a chance that with NIL, Scoot Henderson, you know, Scoot comes to Auburn, possibly. Um, but he had an opportunity to do something for himself and his family. And he was certainly physically mature enough. Um, but, you know, you could just draw a list of, of guys that could have been on this team. From Jalen Green to Sharif, you know, Isaac still, you know, Walker Javari. You could have a lot of fun doing that. But they weren't and this group managed to stay together i'll tell you a lot of teams with lesser character i think because we had so many tough losses could have fallen apart this team didn't and but we're you know we're, we're disappointed we had the number one seed in this region on their heels and um houston did the things they needed to to get back in the game, but we helped them. Last question, far right. Coach Pro, Jeff Harrison from WRBL in Columbus. After you know such a tough loss to a, a, a bit of bitter sweet way to end the season, but what lessons do you take from a year like this as you move forward to the next season? Well, if it's not broke, don't fix it. What we do works. We, uh, um, we'll recognize and honor these guys, you know, for their contribution. I'll be shifting gears now, helping, um, you know, the guys that are going to want to take a look at maybe where their draft status could be. We'll look at that. Um, and, um, you know, in the next week or two, get a look at what our roster looks like if we lose anybody in the transfer portal um, and begin to rebuild it. Okay, thank you.